I love Mondays. I love Mondays. And how to make it better? Jake and Louie, everyone. Jake and Louie. How yo! Did you say better? Are you I, feeling okay, Gino? I did indeed say better now. Are you sure you don't mean last minute fucking bullshit? <laughs> I uh, wait to be. But it's an it's a, it's an insane request. Like let's see, like I'm 170 something like that. Like would that? Look at Louis! Look at Louis! Looking at his dick! Look at Louis! Looking! <laughs> an extra 20. This is the most. No, it'd be horrible. Your puppet's creepy. He's just looking at your penis. Look away. This is such an intelligent show. But Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis, can we see the tweet? I put the tweet up because, again, this is, in my opinion, the fourth way Shane Gillis has broken fucking the narrative in the past. And we will get to the responses on this, okay? I told you he broke fucking uh, Bud Light because it's like, we don't want frat boys, we want frat boys. He broke SNL, we don't want fucking this guy. He's got more followers us than Patreon, we want this guy. Okay, and I'll get back to that. And he broke fucking uh, TMZ. Look, look what he did. This is what he said, and they're putting him on SNL, and he broke them because they knew people would take his side, but they wanted people to click on their fucking site. And now fucking this Yahoo article, which is actually the Daily Beast, but I said the Yahoo, like, I put, my God, the left never gets tired of losing. We get it, Yahoo. You need the clicks. And then I wrote, of course, if you read the comments after the article, they'll all agree how fucking brilliant and hilarious it was. No one believes the left anymore. Or cares. Now, I, now read some of the comments because many people disagreed with me. Many people disagreed. And I'll be the first to admit, we have different definitions of brilliant and hilarious. They all agree fucking brilliant and hilarious. Sir, it was mid respectfully. Who are you? Right, but, but still, I respect his opinion. And by the way, I, I put the, the toast and the fist bump. He thought I was saying I'd hit him. Uh, corporate journalists aren't people. The EU, they promised. <laughs> that's great. I like that one. Left bowing to the woke cult is causing tons of long time. Okay, that's... A First time I've stayed up and watched SNL in 10 years. His monologue was funny, not fantastic, but funny. Respect that. Uh, uh, was it, Wait, the pre-recorded, did I miss it? The pre-recorded bits were great. Trump shoes and emu insurance. Uh, my favorite was, and uh, my favorite was the human resources skit. Did you guys watch it? I know you're busy parenting and stuff. I actually sat there yesterday and watched it. I saw clips on Twitter and I thought they were all good. I thought the it's fucking a million times better than any shit that fucking faggot ass show has done in the last 20 years. Yeah. That's so what I mean. Great. Brilliant and hilarious. Uh, Quinn said he didn't bomb at all. Oh, wait, the skits were aside from the group in the bar and the butt plug pit. That was the last. That was really good. I'd give him a solid 7.5. OK, Joe. Uh, Quint, he didn't bomb at all. He was great. More actual comedians should start hosting. I think the uh, SNL now realizes they let slip by. Uh, I don't know what Palouse it is. SNL was funny for the first time in 20 years. Yep. Uh, Atticus Flynn. Hey, stranger. The first true thing I've ever heard Gino say, because all I do is lie. Mm -mm. Uh, Seth Pearl, not a fan of SNL. Funniest it's been since the 90s. Uh, so true. I'm sick of the left. Show more replies, because I think one more guy disagreed with me. Gino, <laughs> Samson Wrigley. Gino, it wasn't good. Uh, and I put, it was hilarious. What are you, retarded? You get it? Because they said retarded. Uh, and then it's uh, Yahoo execs reading your tweet and subsequently overhauling its corporate structure. That's funny. Yeah. You guys making fun of me like, this guy yelled at us. I think you're being sarcastic and hilarious. I'm a big Gillis fan, but let's be real. He kind of bombed. Only dick riders and cum colored glasses will say it was the best. Call in hot water show tomorrow we can discuss. Only unfunny sketch was one without Shane, of course. The, the opening sketch, of course it couldn't have Shane in it. The opening sketch was them shitting on Trump. And and I had tr I have trouble now watching. Uh, it was all right. Definitely wasn't brilliant. He's had funnier stuff. Um, and we're gonna get to the article. Fine. All right. So here's 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 what I'm saying. Oh, Dan from St. Louis. Uh, we'll get to him in a sec. Uh, Nelson Peabody. The Daily Beast equals twat fest. By the way, and if you don't get something, I've never seen another performer do. Fucking point out his parents. Point out his fucking parents. It's my dad. He's a fucking, and he repeated it. If you don't think that's great, if you that was interesting, yeah. It wasn't interesting, Dan. It was fucking glorious. <laughs> it's faith, family, and football. It's fucking God, 
family and your passion, and he fucking did all three. He did a church skit, which I didn't like that much. But do you understand? He literally called his dad. He busted his old man's balls because his old man taught him to bust fucking balls. He fucking said to his mother, he's like, I love my mother. He's like, when did I stop being your best friend? He told a true story, and then he made it a dick joke because he doesn't give a fuck about SNL. And he fucking said a lot, and he fucking said three black kids were going to beat up someone for calling their family retarded. He fucking shoved it all in their cunt fucking faces. Yeah, but that was on his Netflix special because it's so perfect. It's the Netflix special that SNL wouldn't let him do until they got cucked and begged Shane to come back. And he said, I'm going to do something for my Netflix special, which probably will land with a lot of viewers because they're too fucking stupid. Not viewers. The viewers are us. Fucking the people in the crowd. Fucking this is new to them because they're too busy sucking this show's cock. Frankie, can you say hi to In Hot uh, Water super fan Judy? Her name's Judy. Hi, In Hot Water show super fan Judy. No, her name's Judy uh, Stroyer. Judy Stroyer. Hi, Judy Stroyer. <laughs> yeah, so I just sent you a link to my video just now. Please <laughs> chat. Frankie, Frankie. Frankie's like most his lack. <laughs> Sorry, I made it fucking so. Now, Frankie, look, this is you. <laughs> Not true, not true, not true. Now, look at this. Edited. That's off our cost, $500 Canadian. Watch this, watch this. Frankie, it's right on your closet door, look. I don't see it at all. <laughs> I not. don't see it. <laughs> Sorry, did it. This Polish Look at shop. Louis. That's off our cost, $500 Canadian. Well, Frankie, it's, it, like, if I knew, didn't know any better, it would be like you keep, like, I, I watch a lot of SVU, and people have souvenirs, and they, by the way, I just realized not true. it's I not just my out. headband, it's my hair. <laughs> I don't got no silver as well. Look at that Jufro on Frankie. Frankie, when did you get a toilet put in the uh, put in your bedroom? Not true, not Why true. Why are you letting a black guy that. use it? <laughs> Louie! Frankie, Fra you need better trigger discipline. You can't just have your finger resting on it like that. You gotta I keep it off. I don't have it. Somebody did you really have bad trigger shop discipline? that top I cost $500 Canadian. How's your trigger discipline, Frankie? Gee. It's somewhere that top I cost $500 Canadian. Some, uh, somebody did it. Because in this picture, it looks shop. very bad. You know what's trigger discipline, Frankie? I'm gonna try this again. My friend Judy, Judy Stroyer, can you say Judy Stroyer has trigger discipline? Judy Stroyer has trigger discipline. <laughs> hey, Gino, did you get the link to the video? <laughs> do I even need to do any more show today? Frankie, right, here we go. Oh, please. Did you get the link to the video, Gino? If you can do that, headband you, I will fucking... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're looking for the video right now, but Frank, we're not done. So I can't help but notice <laughs> I can't help but notice. Uh, oh, this is <laughs> metamorphosis. <laughs> Permission to treat him as a hostile witness, Your Honor. <laughs> Frankie, where'd your head? <laughs> All right, Frankie, it's gone. It's gone, Frankie. Are you mad? Do you feel blame? <laughs> Frank, <laughs> we might have to take it. <laughs> All right, Frankie, there you go. Just do the talking mouth. <laughs> Frankie, you're back. You're okay, Frankie. Look at that. Better. <laughs> nice job. You guys, they're fucking pros. They're fucking pros. Frankie, now why is there a toilet on your over your left shoulder? I don't got a toilet in a room. That means somebody photoshopped it. That's our podcast. Five hundred dollars Canadian. So you're saying that's a Photoshop toilet to yeah, your left? Yeah, it's advanced Photoshop. Look at your left. Isn't that a? Are you putting your head in the toilet, Frankie? No. <laughs> no. Somebody did advanced Photoshop. Boy, that's our podcast. Five hundred dollars Canadian. And I don't remember uh, signing off on that merchandise, Frankie. I think I need to uh, contact the Canadian police about that. Yeah, now, $500 Canadian. It's Jim Stansel, everyone, surrounded by women he has no shot with. There you go. Hey, hey! Let's see about that. Do we? <laughs> let, me get, let me get into this 13.5% alcohol margarita and Do we, see what happens the, in an hour and a half. By the way, uh, uh, I think you know the uh, if you watch the uh, wet spot, as I often do, and sometimes scream at the TV, fuck you, Joe Curry, you're wrong, after I've yelled it at the boss and Chrissy Mayer. And we'll hey, get Joe to Curry. That's the guy you smashed off of his chair at Chrissy's wedding, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that, you can't show that video? Did you show that last night? I tried to kill Joe Curry. Instead, you find a, you've got America's favorite old fart. You, you fish out something from Love Connection. How uh, did he? I forgot about your video. It's quite all right. Uh, ladies, but let's get to the, uh, let's get to the point. Uh, the lovely Violet Brandani, 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 yes. excuse me. Hi. How are you? <laughs> you too. We're on the wet spot last night, correct? Yes. And you just came from Real Ass Podcast? 
Yeah. With Louis J. Gomez and Zach Amico. You ever see Zach Amico so do stand up, Garrett? Can you get me on that show? It stinks. Do you want, really? What's yes. That? Oh, no, yeah. no, no, nothing. They Let me get that out of the way so we have room. Oh, you're advocate. The, Quit. This looks like I'm about to yell at you, Violet. Does this look like the face? Well, it she does. gets it because she's Italian. She I don't know when you're like, yelling because you like, kind of yell you. when you talk. This is my normal voice, right? <laughs> yeah. Italian. And Keanu, I'm going to get in trouble with this. Keanu's like, stop yelling at me. But Keanu talks like my, my fiance. She's Sicilian. She's a crazy woman. I'm, I adore her. What are you trying but to she, say about Sicilian? She gets loud, and I just have to sit there and be like, okay. And I'm yelling. <laughs> And I lo and I and I hope she realizes I'm fucking bragging about it. Just, used to it because yeah. she's and she just sits there screaming at me and I get an erection. I'm sorry. She's <laughs> all right. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's cute. And she's like That's she's it. like you have to calm down. I have to calm down. Enough yeah. about your erection. Oh, I don't want to. I'm sure I'm in trouble. I'm sure I'm in trouble. All right. So like getting slapped. The, this, is the, <laughs> you can, uh, this is the point I'm making. Like I think we all most people think it's a sucker punch because it's just how you define it. Uh, whether you think he's going, do, do you think, let me ask you and then we'll show the video. Do you think I should have thought Pat was going to walk in and punch me? No, I actually, then it's a I actually punch. do think it's a sucker punch. Me oh. personally. Okay, why? Oh, so that means you weren't expecting the punch. Yeah. The no. Sucker punch. Oh. No. Watch this. <laughs> Chrissy, should I have been expecting the punch? No, why would you be expecting that? Garrett, should I have been expecting the, wait, hold on, because Steve, should I have been expecting the punch? <laughs> <laughs> you no, get a of course not, Gino. That would be ridiculous for someone to punch you. <laughs> See, they act like they're my friends, but they're terrible people. To... Garrett! Yeah, Garrett. Ready for this? Garrett! Yep. <laughs> What's up? Should I have been expecting the punch? <laughs> Constantly. Yeah. I don't know how you're not every day. <laughs> really? Should, yeah. Garrett, I, you know what? Real. it wasn't the a sucker punch. He should want that. Me. Yes! Everywhere that goes. I have no problem Hands with. up. It's, or wear a helmet or something. But here's protection. the difference. Like, I could see a stranger walking up to me on the street and clocking me, and I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> but Pat Dixon, we had a back and forth going, and he just ran out of stuff because yeah, he left out on drugs. He gave you a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let, Garrett, do you want, let me see if Garrett wants to change his answer. Garrett. Yep. <laughs> do you think I should have been expecting to get punched? Uh, I do. Every day you should expect that. And not Aww. from strangers. <laughs> yeah, that's just from that's me. Yeah. Strangers, you're five. Kiana's going to punch me when I walk. I yell! <laughs> She's just going to clock me. It came in the mail yesterday. Do you want to do your thing again? Uh, we did it. <laughs> I came in the mail yesterday. I, uh, and I was going to, it came yesterday, but I'm like, because Jim Florentine is scheduled to Skype in today, and I think he'll get a kick out of this. Uh, thank you to El Harible, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Are you fucking with me? Uh, El Harible, if you don't know, is the gentleman that's a uh, taller, funnier, more charming me, if that's possible. He, he checks three for three. And he also plays this character, and look what he sent Keanu. I fucking love this guy. Look at this. He sent Keanu the Tukey shirt. How great is that? At any rate, it doesn't matter because these are the tits you wanted to see, people. It doesn't Woo! It doesn't matter. Sorry. And thank God Steve went late. I was doing push-ups for 20 minutes in there. Ladies I and gentlemen. I can tell your nipples are smaller. I <laughs> from, from all the... What did, what did Garrick... Look at these. Going. Look Shiny. at these. You have dime-sized nipples. What is nipples? wrong with me? They're so shy. Look at them. It looks like... It looks like You'll God. never be able to breastfeed with those. It looks like I was being... It, like I was being born, and they yelled at God, you didn't put nipples on. Real fast, real fast. Just just put these on real fast. I have to... By the, by the way, I look exactly like the guy, Tukey. I look exactly you like... I don't even... Look look, I don't even look like me now. I don't. I don't look like me. Both look so greasy. But again, I cannot thank El Harible enough uh, for two things. One, obviously for the gifts. And two, he made me realize. He, he made this old Grinch's heart grow three sizes that day because I'm like, not everyone in the Dabbleverse are assholes. Jim Florentine, everyone. Jim Florentine. Yo, dude! What's going on, Gino? All good things. How are you, you handsome son of a bitch? You dress like fucking Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I, I do not. Look at this. I got to fuck you. I don't know if you know this. I'm a professional comedian, Jim. I'm a professional fucking comedian. Nice. No, but that, that, that looks like a Travis Kelsey jacket. No one needs more attention than that motherfucker. <laughs> After you got fucking canceled along with Metzger and fucking Dave, who's fucking libertarian and Gomez, you didn't really shit on that club. You just said, whatever. You listened to their diatribe, and I believe you just announced that the Tacoma Club is honoring your tickets. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I wasn't even mad. I laughed when I found out I yeah. was, that they canceled all our dates. It wasn't until September anyway. It's like, okay, they were tickets were on sale for two weeks. Then all of a sudden we get this email, hey, we can't have these guys here or a progressive club and their values don't, you know, uh, fit in with our club. We check with the community and the local comics. I was like, whatever. And then as soon as that happened and the story started getting out there, my agent and I was getting all these different offers. Hey, we'll have you here. We'll have you here. Please play here. This is, this is what Seattle represents. And the Tacoma Comedy Club, which is 20 minutes away from this club, goes, we'll take all the guys. And closer to and, the airport, they honor by my the way. Weekend. They honor my weekend, and I'm booked there now, 20 minutes away. So all my fans will go there. Yeah. Look at this. After careful consider, I guess I need to clean up my act. My comedy shows in Seattle are canceled along with Gomez, Smith, and Metzger. After careful consideration and discussion with our team. And listen to, th by the way, uh, I, I sent an email to them because uh, Chrissy and uh, Keanu were talking about it on uh, her stream. And I sent them an email trying to get booked, you know, uh, saying, uh, just using all the buzzwords. It's like, it's like I'm a non-binary comedian and uh, I want to thank you for being an ally. Just all the buzzwords to see if they would stupidly book me without looking at, you know, any of my wonderful sets which are online. But they, this is all it is. It's buzzwords that say nothing, you know, to try and fucking kiss the ass of the left who doesn't even care about comedy. Can we read it again just for a giggle? Thank you, guys. Uh, after careful consideration and discussions with our team, investors, local comedians, neighborhood advocacy groups, neighborhood... Can you imagine Carlin or Pryor or Dangerfield saying, how can I please the neighborhood advocate? How will this resonate? This is how comedy has just lost its way. And when you're stupid like us, and I mean that in a great way, and I'm, I'm giving myself much credit, putting myself in the same category as people like you and fucking government. Like, we just want to tell stupid jokes, and 99% of the people in the club want that, and no one at a club is saying, uh, make sure you check with the local advocacy group. We've encountered a challenging situation. No. No, Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values we've received. Aren't, isn't Capitol Hill known for that community where they didn't want police and a day later someone got shot and they went screaming for the police? What was that thing called? I can't remember. Chaz. Chad. Chad. It was yep. called Chaz. Yeah. Uh, the feedback includes concerns from local advocacy groups that are deeply embedded in our community and work. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the same thing happened to this girl. This actually works out. Like, Violet had, uh, she had how many followers on your Instagram? About 13.6 million. 13.6 yeah. million. Imagine if you had 13.6 million followers on your Instagram, Jim, right? And then your agent literally took you off of it and made Gino Bisconti your fucking, you know, and gave all the followers to me. What, I, I'm guessing. But it's been really cool because I've been able to do, like, things I want to do. And it just seems like people are hitting me up and opportunities are happening that weren't before. I would think before. everyone, I would argue, just like everyone that's a real fan of comedy that saw what that t that Seattle club did to Jim, everyone that went to the Instagram and saw someone that looks like me in a wig, which isn't bad, I'll show you. <laughs> and, everyone that's like, you're not violent, Brand, And they found you and they sought you out. Uh-huh. So they yes, probably had exactly. they probably strengthened their fucking what you were saying, their loyalty. It helps with fans. And I say the same thing about this show. I love this show, you know, and we get to be stupid four days a week. And the people that love it, it's not like I'm sitting there saying, wow, we really need to fucking work. Our fa we, we put on as great a show as we can every fucking week and yesterday's. I'm kidding. That was a blast. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> And then, then the fans tell the other fans. That's the new model, and it's better than anything because your fans fucking do the work for you. Am I wrong, Jim? No, you're right. Why did you get, what happened with your Instagram? It got hacked? Um, so I was with my manager since I was 18, and so he owned every piece of social media, and I guess my name technically, too. That's why I changed my last name to my... It was Vanessa, right? I'm kidding. Yeah. Minutes, <laughs> Wait, that would be cute. Violet Vanessa. Don't change your name now. <laughs> I'm digging that. But Brandani's like my birth last name. So I was like, I'll just do that. Yeah. And um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Oh, I so just... he, he took over your Instagram. Be... Yeah. Um, okay. I was just wanting to do like certain podcasts and collabs, and he wouldn't let me do those things that I wanted to do. It was like, no, you need to only work with our girls, only do what we say you can do. And I was just really tired of it. And yeah, it's, I mean, everyone was like, how could you leave that account? But I feel like they're, they're following me. Like you said, the fans yeah. do the work. Like you go back to the, that account and they put another girl on the team on my old account and it's lost like 600,000 followers already. Yeah. It's, yeah. Cause they, 
Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Chanel Omari. There's your save the date. There you oh, go. my God. There I'm you go. so there excited. You go. Can I open it? Or and should what, I do it later? What, do you want Luby and fucking him to say? I'm kidding. Um, of course you can open it. Just, Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. This is an oh, honor. How could you not be? This is you know, an honor. Is it really? Yeah. I'm really? invited to your guy's wedding. I'm never invited to... By the way, and this brings To me, popular comics' weddings. You know what I've been doing for the wedding? Oh, Biscontin. You still you. aren't. <laughs> you still aren't. You know, do you need help? October 13th, fall wedding. Love, so Italian, love it, and Jewish, it? very. My parents got married Charleston, in... South Carolina, that's yeah, amazing. Do you wanna give... I'm sorry. <laughs> wanna give the address and the location and uh, you know who's coming? Steve and his wife Courtney are coming, right? You guys are? Yeah! Wait, am I allowed to bring a date or not really? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> no, thank you, this is amazing. Uh, thank you, I am it? very excited, yes, I am not gonna read the details. Now we have to so invite you're... Steve and Luby and E-Rock, are right, you happy? Because you made I'm, a big deal I'm of it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize the etiquette, guys. I, I'm like so used to us being such close friends that I'm like... No one likes you. Okay, whatever. Like I give a fuck. Like I give a fuck. By the way, it's a very good book, but they're like, oh no, the ballpoint pen wasn't invented yet, and it's written in ballpoint pen. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Maybe she wrote it and then they oh, took no, it and all the dogs. Go, 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 go. But yeah, you can follow me, by the way, for the tickets. Um, Let's give back to City Harvest. Thank you guys for that. And Chanel in the City Podcast, you're going to come on it. Kiki's going to come on it soon, so tune in. And where are you March 23rd? The Cutting Room, March 23rd, with these two handsome men, Gino Bisconte, Rick Moore. We're going to get Monroe. Monroe. Oh, my God, Rick Moore. Read either one of the signs. Hey, by the way. I can't you... see Rick Monroe. We're off to a bad start. Did you ever burn no, a steak or so dump? You got close. You got R&M. I'm good enough. Rick, did you ever burn a steak or dump it in a, a gallon of water and then have to give it to the dog and the dog didn't even want it steve does that i have not had that experience yet but she'll what? eat anything what am i looking at thank you no she was right look his name oh rick moore, <laughs> oh, rick moore. i was right or no you just did that no, that's it. His name's Rick Moore. Because you yeah, it's all there. Now I said it, so now your name's Rick Moore. Check out Rick Moore and the Mormons. <laughs> Rick Moore and the Cowboys Rick, and the comedians. You're the fucking best. Have a good weekend. Kiss the fam. Feed that dog. That is in hot water with a little. As we uh, take a little of Anthony Cumia's time. Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank there you, you for this opportunity always. Yeah.